Good morning. It's a very good morning. It's the Lord's Day. We are just glad to be here at First Baptist Church K Springs to bring forth the Word of God in a Sunday school format, uh, a teaching lesson. And we will see today how Jesus taught. We're going to begin a lot about the background of Jesus for one reason, and that is that we should really know who he is before we can accept what he says to be the truth. So, glory to God, it's the Lord's day, and I hope today that you not only have God's Holy Spirit, but actually you're filled with the Spirit. While you're turning in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4, where we will begin... In Matthew chapter 4, we'll be looking at verses 23 through uh, the end, which is verse 25, and then we will look at chapter 5, the first two verses, and then toward the end of the lesson, then we go to chapter 7 with two verses to conclude. So, turn to chapter 4 in your Bibles, and while you're doing that, let me... Uh, Take a moment to examine that statement, being filled with the Holy Spirit. In the Acts of the Apostles, we always saw it preceding some mighty act of God when it would say, so-and-so was filled with the Holy Spirit, and then God would do a mighty work through their teaching, through their ministry, or whatever, when they explained the, the uh, scriptures. So it... It all, even my teaching, for whatever it is, it, if I'm not filled with the Spirit, it's, not a, it's going to be weak. But when the Spirit has control of this and uses me, then there, there's power in the Word of God. Well, we become believers. When we become believers, we're given the Holy Spirit. We're indwelled with His Holy Spirit, but we're not always filled. We're not always filled with the Holy Spirit. And God does promises. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 says that we will be sealed with that spirit of promise when we believe, when we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, what we call being saved. We're indwelled. And the scripture says that we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, if you're a believer today, you have that Holy Spirit. But to be filled with the Spirit means there is no longer any room for me. The I disappears. It becomes all about the Lord Jesus Christ, all about the Father in heaven. We give him everything that we are and let nothing in this world come between us. And then is when he uses us. Well, God takes the lead in our lives and we simply follow. It's that simple. Today, if we set aside worldly cares, we too can be filled with God's Holy Spirit and we become as the apostles. We become witnesses. We become workers for Christ. We become loaded, so to speak, to be able to bring the good news to everyone we meet. So if you've turned to chapter 4 in Matthew, we can begin reading with verse 23, we'll read verses 23 through 25, and then uh, we'll move on to chapter 5. Here's what it says. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in this name, of Jesus. We come before you today. We thank you for your word. We know that it's given through the Lord Jesus Christ. 
we know that it's the truth because he is the truth. So what we read today and what we see today, we can take it to heart. And Lord God, we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and your plan of salvation through him. Forgive us, Lord, our sin, and forgive me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Verse 23 starts off, saying, And Jesus went. He went in obedience to God in all his earthly ministry. And he began his earthly ministry preaching, preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He is the kingdom of heaven. He is our future king for all eternity. And the kingdom of heaven is going to be exactly what he's going to teach us throughout this winter in these few chapters that we have outlined from chapter 4 through chapter 6. He healed people. He preached the kingdom of heaven is at hand and then he proved that he was God by the miracles that he did. He healed people. The question was asked over and over, who is this man? Who is this man? We as Americans have heard the name of Jesus all our lives. Thousands of times we've heard it. And sad to say, many have never really listened or paid attention and never have got to know the Lord Jesus Christ. A missionary in Africa gave an example of a person that he met while on his uh, routines for the day. And he asked the gentleman, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you like to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you like me to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ? And the man simply said, Who is this Jesus? He doesn't walk on my road. That was his vernacular. It was his area. The road that he walked from place to place. He'd never met Jesus. How could he know Jesus? That's sometimes the opportunities that we get, not in that same terminology. But some people may have heard of Jesus, but they certainly don't know Jesus. And this man simply asked, who is this Jesus? Well, in this month of December, we'll have the opportunity to tell others a lot about this Jesus. It's going to be the Christmas month, uh, and it's going to, we'll have the opportunity to start at the beginning, at his birth. Uh, not his beginning, but his beginning here in his first coming to this earth as a baby. The birth of Jesus Christ, that miraculous coming of the Savior who is Christ the Lord. His name is Emmanuel, and that means God with us. That's exactly who Jesus is. He's God among us here on this earth. If you're blessed to have a copy of the literature that goes along with this study, uh, it's entitled, Begin with the End in Mind. We're going to begin with Jesus Christ and keep pointing to the end and the reason why he came to this earth is to save people from their sin. Jesus came for the express purpose to save mankind from the curse of sin. At the time of our text today, Jesus was 30 years old. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke give a detailed account of his miraculous birth in Bethlehem, how it came about, and then it talks about uh, as a child, a baby, being uh, whisked off to Egypt to save his life from a wicked king, Herod. And then when Herod and his regime and his administration was gone. The Lord sent the message, an angel to Mary and Joseph said, you can bring the child back now because those that wanted to kill him were gone. The Old Testament prophets told us all these things. They're still in the books of Zechariah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. All these prophets foretold exactly what Jesus was going to live like who he was and why he's coming and all those things, the importance of it was that he was the Jewish Messiah. Well, God always does his will perfectly and in his time. So the way Jesus was born, how he lived his life, 
We have no history of it, no detailed history. God just picks out the important things. Said he came, this is what he did, and this is what's important. We have no record again of Jesus until he's 12 years old. When his earthly parents, Joseph and Mary, traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Well, it's a requirement that they had to fulfill. <clears throat> You'll find that reading in Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 49. And that's where we see his proclamation to his parents when they had lost him for three days. They lost track of him, couldn't find him. They found him in the temple, ministering and discussing scriptures with the temple rulers. And when his mother asked him, why did you do this? Why? Why are you here? Why did you make us worry for three days? He said, do you not know I must be about my father's business? Not Joseph's business. Joseph was a carpenter in Nazareth. He was about his father's business, his heavenly father, because he is the son of God. And then for the next 18 years, the scriptures are silent about how he lived. But at 30 years, he's baptized by John the Baptist the prophesied forerunner of Christ, the voice crying in the wilderness. Well, he's the cousin of Jesus by his earthly parents, and he was preaching when he became, came of age. He began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, speaking about Jesus Christ being born, being here on earth already. Well, this baptism by John the Baptist is significant in one special aspect because this baptism was an outward show of what God had in mind. Jesus Christ said he needed to be baptized and John told him, uh, I'm not worthy to baptize you. <laughs> I need to be baptized of you. Jesus Christ looked at him and said, no, this is necessary. And we read it in the previous chapter, in chapter 3, verse 15, said, Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus Christ was in obedience to what John was preaching. Repentance, this baptism, was a show of repentance for the average person. Jesus Christ did not have to repent. He had no sin, but he did it to show what repentance really meant. And it was a witness, and he needed to do it to show the world that he was in ob obedience to the Father. And of course, when this happened, the Father did agree. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the scripture said that the spirit came down upon him as of a form of a dove. So Christ then was, had an outward show of being anointed with the spirit of God, showing that he was the anointed one, which is exactly what Christ means, the anointed one. Well, moving right along, he was baptized. He was baptized and he went into his priestly ministry. The Mosaic law said a Levite had to be 30 years old to become a priest. So Jesus Christ, though he wasn't a Levite and never would be a Levitical priest, he was 30 years old. And by the Jews um, looking at the situation, knew that he was old enough to be a priest. This is the time of our text today at the beginning of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he has called unto himself 12 disciples, the 12 who would become the 12 apostles who we have been studying for the last three months, the Acts of the Apostles. They were spirit-filled. Spirit-filled men who turned the world upside down because they knew Jesus. We see here in verse 23 also that he taught. 
And that's what Jesus is known for throughout the world, that he was a great teacher. It says, Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Sounds like the Paul that we discussed so many months as we followed his journeys last time. Teaching them in the synagogues, revealing the scriptures through himself. He should be able to do a good job of it. He wrote the book. <laughs> he gave the scriptures. So he taught and what a teacher he was. Then he preached the good news. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He preached the good news of sin being removed by repentance. And the third thing he did is he miraculously healed. He took away all the atrocities that come from the curse of sin. And he got people's attention when he miraculously healed, restoring those who were afflicted by this curse of sin. It was a picture of the ultimate, ultimate power that would someday take away the sin of the world and give eternal life to all who would believe. John the Baptist introduced Jesus. Well, we have a record of that. John the Apostle in his book, the book of John, he has a record of the baptism of Jesus and wrote this. John Baptist saw Jesus come and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. So that was his purpose. That was the end purpose that he had come for in the first place. Thirty years he lived a life on this earth totally sin free. He had fulfilled the law. He had done what no human being had ever done before. He lived his life without succumbing to the curse of sin. Well, so we get this title that I mentioned a while ago again to begin begin with the end in mind. So while we're studying t today, we're going to be looking at Christ's end, his purpose, all and how it applies to us. We're going to listen to what he has to say in our future studies. He's going to teach and teach and teach and teach to give us an idea of how to live this Christian life. So you believe. If you believe, then you need to believe what he's written, believe what he says, and then follow his commands. Romans 10, 17 tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And that's what we have today. We have the word of God. Now let's look at chapter 5 and verses 1 and 2. And it summarizes after he had taught and taught and taught and taught for this great amount of time through verse uh, chapters 4 through 6. It says, Seeing the multitudes... He went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them. That's us. We're his disciples. We believe him. We trust him. Now let's begin to see what he has to say for us. Turn with me to chapter 7. Chapter 7 of Matthew verses 24 through 29. We're going back to one of the oldest Sunday school lessons that we've ever been introduced to when we were youngsters, sometimes barely able to read and maybe not even be able to write yet, but we knew about the wise man and the foolish man. Verses 24, 25, 26, and 27, all the way through 29. We'll be reading now. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and the beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. 
And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. When Jesus Christ made that statement in verse 24, said, Whosoever, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings, that's any, anyone and everyone, whosoever that's within earshot, who hears, obeys, and does what he says, will become wise. Proverbs 2 and verse 6 says, For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh the knowledge and understanding. All understanding that we need in this world can be garnered from the scriptures, from God's word. It gives us the wisdom to lead the life that's pleasing unto God. In verse uh, 24, it ended saying, The wise man built his house upon a rock. Well, verse 25, why did the house hold up? Because it had a good, strong foundation to attach to. The rain, the wind, the rain, the flood, nothing could bother it. It had a stable foundation, a big rock. Jesus is our rock. That's the point he's trying to make. Believe in me and you will be safe. When we build our lives upon him, nothing in this world can shake his eternal protection away from us. He has protection for his followers, his believers, his church, if you will. Matthew 16 and verse 18 says, Upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. If you belong to a church, it's because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't just walk up to a building and walk in and say, Where do I sign? I want to be part of this church. It comes through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that builds the church. He's the one that saves individual souls. Without him, there's no hope. Today of all days, the Lord's day, we should be filled with his Holy Spirit. To be totally aware of God's presence with us and to be astonished also at his teaching. This Christmas season, especially, begin again to really see who Jesus is. Yearn for his presence in your life. Be encouraged by the words of Jesus. And as we strive to study them in the coming weeks and months, pay particular atten attention. In most Bibles that you read, those words will be in red. And the, the people that wrote them in red especially said, since these are the words of Jesus, they need to be outlined. They need to be highlighted. They need to be brought to your attention totally as being important. As James 1.22 tells us, but be ye doers of the word. In other words, Jesus Christ says, this is the way I want you to follow me. We don't argue. We don't discuss. We don't say, well, what if? No, he said, we do. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving our own selves. If you begin to question what Jesus Christ said, that's what you're doing. You're only deceiving yourself. Let the Holy Spirit lead, guide, direct, and he does that through his word. He promises that if you want to speak with God, if you want to hear Jesus Christ's words, the Holy Spirit will enable you to do just that when you read the scriptures because he will guide you. That's his promise. It's written in the scriptures, said, I will send a comforter, and through him you'll be able to understand all the things that you read. That's what we need. We need understanding, and it only comes through the wisdom that Jesus Christ said comes to the wise man, and the wise man gets wisdom through the word of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time we've had together today. And Lord, we thank you for the future that's already in your control. The future that we have no idea what's going to happen, you've already got it planned. And it's planned out so that the 
world can come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And the future is in Christ. We need to find Christ today. Forgive me, Lord, for I failed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.